Hello students, uh, welcome to um, Environmental Studies and now we are in module number 5 which is nothing but latest de developments in environmental pollution mitigation tools. So in this uh, module I am going to cover the next uh, video like field work, environmental engineering laboratory, green building and uh, water treatment plant. So straight away we will uh, go to the topic. So the first one is uh, field work. So what is that nothing but the field work? So because um, we have to physically check and uh, understand the process. So how the things are going on in the engineering laboratory, okay, which is related to environment. So what is that nothing but how to do that? So we have to visit the environment uh, engineering laboratory or green building or uh, water treatment plant or water, uh, wastewater treatment plant. So all these areas just, just visiting and understanding and uh, understanding the process and we have to document it. So all these things comprises the field work. So this is all about the field work. So why it is required all these things already we have seen that in laboratory and the, what is that engineering laboratory and green building that I am going to ex explain in my next slides and uh, what are the different methods to what you call and what are the assessment that we are going to we are doing so that only all uh, in my previous videos that I have covered so first one we are going to see that green building so so why it is required this design construction and operation uh, why it is required to reduce or eliminate a negative impact and a creative positive impact on what climate and the nature environment so normally um, that flyovers and all so uh, some some areas that we see that uh, plants are grown and some buildings so so they uh, encourage uh, planting the trees small small plants and all those things they kept uh, they keep it for uh, removing or eliminating or reducing the negative impacts which is uh, falling on the environment and it's a great sign for all of us uh, that it is a responsibility to everyone to plant a tree for the what you call for the future generation because the if the same thing happens uh, in the same way how it is happening right now so it will create a, a big damage huge damage on the next generation so to avoid that so this green building this is a kind of uh, what you call creating an awareness for the people to uh, what you call improve uh, the the positive uh, impact on the climatic conditions and the nature nature so so what are these green buildings that preserve precious uh, natural resources and improve our quality of life right so this will improve the the the, the way of the, the looking at the things that perspective um, right so slowly we encourage people by doing this to what you call uh, to encourage or sending the uh, right signals to the people for the what you call planting the trees and all to avoid uh, the reduce the uh, what you call pollution which is happening air pollution right so the next one is the green building so what are the things that we can take or from our, how we can contribute suppose we are constructing a building or a house so what are the things that we can uh, do from our side we can contribute for example I am just going to explain what are the conventional things and what are the other things that we can follow for uh, the green building process so first one is the roofing for, for constructing a building for example conventional method of doing is like tar asphalt and metal sheeting this is the conventional method of doing it so in that so instead of that so roofing can be done in a non-conventional method like uh, rammed earth or green this kind of the buildings that I am shown over there are thatched so these are the things that roofing that we can do it do it and coming to the walls the conventional method of doing is like wood or steel or concrete so these are the things that we uh, follow uh, for constructing walls and all for the other side the non-conventional method is like bamboo sticks or fiber reinforced mortar and uh, recycle plastics so that we can use it for walls and next one is for insulation what are the con uh, conventional method that we follow is fiberglass and polyurethane foam so these are the things that we use for conventional things for the other side the non-conventional straw bale and adobe and uh, recycled contents so the, the time has come uh, for us to shift 
to the non conventional methods right as we all see in the in the module 1 the starting uh, chapters that we have seen the difference between conventional energies and non conventional energies which are which is nothing but renewable and non renewable energies now attention has been given to um, renewable energies like um, solar energy wind energy tidal energy all those things and all so the same way so for uh, to reduce the environmental damage so we have to switch over to the other uh, non conventional methods right so to improve for this green building now coming to this uh, green building what are the things that will include what are the different features which can make a building green so what are the different features that we are going to see the first one is uh, energy resources right efficient use of energy water and other resources so we have to use it in a very effectively and usage of this renewable energy such as as i told you that the solar energy is one among them and then wind energy tidal energy hydel energy so all these things so we have to use that renewable energy instead of non renewable energy such as fossil fuels and all so that will make a, what you call the additional thing to make a building green and next one is reuse and recycling i have been telling uh, from the beginning that uh, so lots of uh, what you call waste materials are being dumped in this environment so how to reuse it and how to recycle it so we have to more focus have to be given focus has to be given to this reuse and recycling pollution and waste re reduction measures and the enabling of reuse and recycling and then indoor environmental air quality so there should be good envir uh, indoor environmental air quality okay so there should be pleasant the indoor should be pleasant the air quality should be pure so there should not be any kind of uh, foreign particles or uh, uh, what you call which uh, harmful gases and then usage of materials that are non toxic ethical and sustainable so uh, choosing the materials so that is also very important which should be non toxic and ethical and sustainable and then design construction operation so consideration of the environment so whatever the design that we use uh, the previous slides uh, what i have told you the difference between the conventional and non conventional the same way for designing or construction uh, construction department or any operation kind of thing or any uh, or as in the case of uh, industries or automobile field so any field so we need to consider uh, the environment into uh, picture so for example automobile industry earlier uh, there was uh, uh, lead which is creating a damage now unleaded petrol right so all these things have been introduced in the for consideration of this environment so in the same way for whatever the things that we use or we do or design or construct uh, or operate so we need to uh, consider the environment so consideration should be there for the environment and then consideration of the quality of life occupants and design consideration and operation quality of life there should be quality at the same time it should be uh, no environment friendly so this is what the green building talks about or it's all about a design that enables adaptation to a changing environment so earlier we have been uh, following the methods but which is not useful for the environment now now we have to adapt the change in the environment so so that kind of design that we have to um, what you call adapt so that uh, the environment will be good and it will be good for our future generations too now this is what i was talking about the green building look at that uh, pictures so there will be a building and a rooftop on top of it so this is the 2020 and 2030 2015 so different different years that, yeah, that is mentioned slowly the growth is being taken place on top of the building and when we construct a building inside uh, indoor so everywhere so there will be a small garden and plants and trees so that will give we take away all the negative impacts which is happening on this environment and it will give a pleasant a uh, quality air and it uh, so we will be comfortable inside so this kind of things are being taken place in this green building so this is all about the different different years that we can see slowly so it has to become a part of it it has to become a uh, part of our uh, daily routine right so this a green building so now coming to this uh, environment uh, engineering laboratory so 
So, uh, different laboratories that we see, that uh, chemistry laboratories or physics laboratories and also, uh, the another thing is environment uh, engineering laboratory. So, what is that uh, do? So, they will take the broad scientific topics like chemistry, can be chemistry, it can be biology, it can be ecology, it can be geology or hydraulics or hydrology or microbiology and mathematics. So, all these areas or topics they will cover for this engineering, uh, environmental engineering laboratory, right? And uh, to create solutions for everything to protect and improve the health of living organisms and improve the quality of life. So this is, that is all about this environmental engineering laboratories. So they check the water quality, that air quality, soil quality. So in each and every department, so they improve, they try to improve the quality of life. And so make our human organisms, our living organisms, feel comfortable so what are the methods they what are the topics they cover so all these things that i have to, uh, spoken about the different different fields so they cover they take the help from them uh, to what you call to improve the health of living organisms to improve the quality of life in the environment engineering laboratories and uh, the next thing is environmental in, uh, engineering laboratory so different experimental methods uh, will be done but relevant to the environmental engineering and uh, so uh, different tests will be done for uh, drinking water sewage samples and checking the pH values and total dissolved solutes and uh, biochemical uh, oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand that is BOD and COD biochemical oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand and uh, what are the total suspended particles are present in the water so as per BIS standards and then so uh, assess the water quality standard of the region, pollution, sewage, working efficiency of sewage and other water treatment unit and then experiment on air that is ambient air uh, parameters such as how much amount of oxides of nitrogen, sulfur dioxide and suspended particles which are under noise pollution measurement are also performed in this lab. So all these things, the areas they will cover in this laboratory, which is nothing but environment engineering laboratories. Next one. So there is a picture which I have posted here. So for your reference that uh, so a sample picture. So which uh, resembles the engineering laboratories, environment engineering laboratories. So they will uh, uh, what you call check each and every uh, field like soil, air, plant, uh, forest, like uh, noise pollution, so all the areas they will check and then uh, so they try to improve the quality of this uh, human origins. So this is the water treatment plant, okay. So this is the, I'm talking about this uh, water treatment plant. plant. It will have the five objectives for typical large water treatment plant. They are pre-treatment, pre-filtration and then filtration, then chemical treatment and disinfection. So these are the five objectives that a water treatment plant does have. So pre-treatment will, will be doing and a filtration will be doing. Pre-filtration again, again filtration and chemical treatment and if there is an infection, infectious bacteria are there, disinfection will be done. Okay, and then although uh, treatment is necessary to improve the quality of drinking water, the process also creates its own pollution problems. Of, absolutely, because we are talking about the improving quality of drinking water. On, in this process, so there will be uh, another advantage is like uh, our own uh, pollution problems will be eradicated slowly by doing this uh, water treatment. Okay, so this is for your, uh, this is a working principle of nothing to explain about this just for your reference how that water treatment plant works and how that functions right so the chemical flash meter sedimentation process the remaining sludge particles will come down and uh, then then clear well and suction well uh, so that storage and so this is this is that uh, the process that is for your uh, reference that water uh, treatment plant how the water the what is the water principle working principle of water treatment plant all right and then so this is another water treatment plant so in another view okay aerobic uh, digester will be there and uh, so 
anoxic and anoxic 1 and anoxic 2 the sludge storation so so this is another uh, view another uh, example that i can show for this water treatment so this is all about uh, this uh, what do you call water treatment plants so we have covered in this uh, how that water treatment plants and environmental engineering and green building so these are the three things that i have covered in this uh, mod in this video okay so thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.